Hello everyone and welcome back to Willow's Notes. In our last video, we talked about how cells communicate through cell junctions. In today's video, we are still in cell-cell contact, but this time the cells don't have junctions between them, rather the cells approach each other and recognize each other. And that's what we call cell-cell recognition. And before I start, I do want to mention that the focus of this video is to show how cells communicate with one another over short distances. Now, in the future, there will be dedicated videos for immunity. However, for today, we will only discuss cell-cell recognition. Let's start with this cell. This is a T helper cell. It's a type of a T cell. And it is called a helper because on its own, it can't carry out an immune response. Instead, T helper cells need to communicate with other white blood cells in order to initiate the response. So it all starts when a white blood cell, it could be a macrophage or a B cell, engulfs or eats or takes in a pathogen. So let's assume this guy is a pathogen and the white blood cell engulfs it. The pathogen is going to be degraded into bits that are referred to as antigens. This white blood cell is now referred to as an antigen presenting cell because it will present these antigens on its surface. To do that, it uses a class 2 MHC molecule. Now, the class 2 MHC, together with the antigen, move to the surface of the cell. The specific T helper cell recognizes the antigen and binds through its receptor to the MHC antigen complex. So this is what we call cell-cell recognition. The T helper cell has recognized the antigen-presenting cell through the membrane proteins. And this binding promotes secretion of cytokines by the antigen-presenting cell. Cytokines are cell signaling molecules, which in this case, activate the T helper cells and stimulate their proliferation. So as you can see, this is not just an example of cell-cell recognition, but it is also an example of paracrine signaling, where a cell released signaling molecules that affect target cells that are close to it. It is also an example of autocrine signaling because the T helper cell itself will release cytokines that will act on the cell itself. As, so what is the effect of these cytokines? These cytokines cause the T helper cell to become active and to divide, to proliferate. Here we can see a B cell that has already internalized and displayed the antigen on its surface through the class 2 MHC molecule. We just saw that the T helper cells that have the specific receptor, they were activated and they proliferated. So now these T helper cells will come and recognize the antigen displayed by the B cell. So now the T helper cell will activate the B cell because of this recognition. Because of this cell-cell communication, the T helper cell activates the B cells, they differentiate into plasma cells, and it's those plasma cells that can secrete antibodies. And as you can see, these antibodies are yet again specific to the antigens that initiated the response. Finally, here we can see yet another example of cell-cell recognition. In this case, we have a T cytotoxic cell and an infected cell. So the infected cell has already presented the antigen on the surface and there's an activated T cytotoxic cell that binds to this complex. And it's because of this recognition, the T cytotoxic cell releases proteins called perforins and perforins form pores on the surface of the infected cell. The TC also releases enzymes called granzymes and these are digestive enzymes that diffuse into the infected cell and initiate apoptosis destroying the infected cell 
Now let's take a look together at the question of the day. Cells communicate by generating and responding to chemical signals over short and long distances. Which of the following best explains how T helper cells mediate cell communication over short distances? Pause the video, try to answer the question, and then hit play so that I can show you the correct answer. If you read the options, I'm sure it landed you on option B that says that they have receptors on their surfaces that directly interact with proteins on other cell surfaces. And this is what we've been talking about in this video. The most important thing or the take home message is that these cells are going to communicate with one another through the proteins that are on their surface. And this was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.